Now, we're somewhere different today. We're on a farm which would be a technology demonstration farm here in Armagh. And it's the farm of John Rafferty, myself and Nicole are just after pulling up here now. This is the first of the farm tours that we're told you guys what we're planning on doing. So we're just walking down here to meet the man himself. As we walk down through a herd of fabulous looking cows on this fully robotic farm. John, pleased to meet you. Pleased to meet you. Pleased to meet you. So John, where are we here now? And can you tell us a little bit about your farm? Yeah, we're a points pass in County Armagh. Um, milking around 150 cows year round. Uh, usually try to keep in around 100 or 110 milking at any one time. Uh, milking with robots now this past 12 years. Um, just due to the fact that we're looking to change from an old milking parlour. Uh, 40, year, 40 years old at the time and we looked at all the parlours and we came across the robots and we like, then studied that for two years and um, learned everything about them and it took a couple of years before we got the price to go ahead for them. And, yeah. So there's no looking back really after that. And what type of system did you have, John, before that? What type of parlour was it? It was an old parlour, kind of made up of every little bit. Heronbone style parlour? Heronbone, uh, 12 aside, what was originally maybe a 6 aside and built up over the years. It was just getting too small for the cows that were starting to breed. Um, yeah. There was no milk milkmaters, we didn't know how much meat we were feeding the cows, so going down the robot route, it changed the whole uh, scenario on our farming, you know, efficiency. You were batch feeding probably before that then in the making part, was just a... Batch feeding and a little bit of buffer feeding and most of the cows were grazing outside most of the time. Have you cows kind of, I know you have robots on both sides, we'll get to them in a minute, but have you cows kind of organised in a certain way? Yeah, over the years we've split them high yielers and low yielers, but what I find works better is we, we separate the cows, first calvers and second calvers on this side, so all the rest of the mature cows go on this side. Right. So with that... Yeah. That just cuts down on the bullion. There's virtually no bullion on that side now. You know, you, you have no more barring cows coming over and, and knocking different colours out. Yeah. How did that happen, you know? And I notice even on your slats, you didn't go down with the rubber. Rubbers on the slats, did you ever consider the rubbers on the slats? I have considered them. We, we put them there in front of the robots to put down on the, any any foot problems. You know, as they turn, there's less, you know, foot injuries done to them. So maybe down the line, we'll maybe do this, this feeding area because they're standing there longer eating. Would you find um, you'd have much problems with, with, with feet uh, and cows? It's an ongoing issue. You, your cows are over half a ton, they're six or seven hundred kilos, and yeah. I do all my own feet. Um, yeah. I've been trained to do my own feet maybe six or seven years now. And uh, I just do the feet as, as they need to be done. And also, they're all routinely foot trimmed that try and off. There's a big part in, in keeping cows' feet right. So she moved, why did she come in and she moved out? So she obviously That's just called her refusal. She's chancing her arm. She's chancing getting get some get of the meat that's left over. Because they're going in for sweeties all the time. Yes, yeah, yeah. That's yeah. their sweet shop. When the gate opens, if she doesn't want to come out, yeah. what happens? Well, she can stand there for 20 seconds, and after 20 seconds, there's a wee, there's a wee wire hangs down, and it's got a slight. Uh, I see it. Slight jagger on it. Um, okay. It increases the pulses of the shop long, on it. So the longer she stands, the stronger the shock can be. But they've got it down to the tee. They can maybe stand for 19 seconds and move off. And intervals then, how, many, how often does the cows get mixed in a 24 hour? It sort of depends on, on the yield of the cow. Um, your high yielder cow can get milk maybe four times, even five times a day. As your cow goes through lactation and she's only given 20 litres of milk, she can milk maybe twice a day or maybe even, as we talk about, one and a half times. Works yeah. out an average, one okay. and a half times. But that, that's good as you're leading cows up to be inside off. It's, it's good to wean them off the milk, sort of. Yeah. You know, as they dry up. Now, if you're away, a man was here walking for you, he missed the cow or whatever. Would you know what's happening on your phone? You're fit to tell everything that's going on. If you knew of a cow that wasn't coming up or get mixed or... Yeah, well, that's the thing. I can look in from the phone anywhere, really, to see what's going on in the farm using the software in the office. And, and we see what cows need milk, uh, what cows are in heat, yeah. and how, in general, how, how the cows are performing. And mastitis-wise, then, would it pick up straight away if, if there's if there's trace of mastitis in a, in a particular animal's quarter? Yeah, well, that's it. it. It reads conductivity as well, so it reads conductivity in each quarter, but when you're in the cow, gallon cows up, we have only maybe two cows to gallop every evening or every morning. But yeah. if you have a high or medium lactating cow that needs to gallop up, yeah. it's either mastitis, lame, or else in heat. So, yeah, just, just being there is a great help, you know, getting them early indications of ill health. Yeah. But the computer is, is 
say it's a, it's a secondary information. You know, we double check what cows are not, not well or, and, you know, check the rumination that we have in the colours there. I'm looking at the cows here myself and they look a very similar style of cow. They're not a big hosting looking cow. So can you tell us a bit about the cows you have, John? Yeah, the cows are all uh, bred by myself. Uh, we breed for medium stature. We don't like the big tall cows. Um, we breed for fat and protein, high fat and protein, and breed for plus 10 fertility. Um, I like the, just the medium sized cow because she's probably getting enough food in there and she's you know, she can maintain her, her, her body condition better. We use sex semen on all animals in the herd that that are select, just due to maybe, you know, good breeding families. Um, and then all the rest are used, I use the uh, Vagin Blues and Angus. I use Angus on the on the heifers as well. You're running collar systems, obviously, so that links up to your robotic system. Yeah, these collars are, are linked to, to the robots, and on these collars there's rumination and, and heat. A activity. If there's a sick cow, I can check on the computer for its rumination. If her rumination drops, that indicates that she stopped eating or she stopped chewing her cud. She's feeling unwell, so I would quickly get in there with the treatment to get her back on her feet again. Uh, would, it's would, you find, would you find like that you would pick out cows that are unwell before you'd actually physically see it without the collar? You'd pick it up much, yeah, much sooner? Yeah, well, with robotic milking, if you have a cow to gather up over, this, over 12 hours and she's a high yielder, yeah. There's something wrong with her cow, either she's so fat, she's sick, or else she, she's in heat. Yeah. You see they're one of them three things and you soon find out what that problem is. So, yeah, you do find them uh, pretty quick now. You know, the sooner you find a problem, the sooner you get it fixed. One question that I would personally have, and I know a lot of people would have as well, is um, cows maybe that are reluctant to come up to get milked. Or the whole kind of learning curve, if you're putting in a computer, or putting in a robot rather, um, the learning curve there is, getting cows used to coming up. So um, obviously when you put this in, is there any tips you could give to people if they were setting up or thinking of going to robots of what they should be looking for or what will come their way when they have yeah. them installed? Well, the way we did it, like a few weekends before startup, we ran the cows through to let them know that there's that there's feed in there and it's a safe place for them to go. So three times every weekend for at least maybe two or three weekends. And on the initial startup, it made things a lot easier. Yeah. You know, cows were weren't afraid to win. They were going in to get some deed. You know, it was nothing to be scared of. So, yeah, our, our startup, I can remember it very well. It ran for 24 hours. We, we had people here 24 hours a day for maybe the first couple of days. Yeah. You know, putting cows in, and it seemed to go very smoothly. And I think that's ideal to, you know, work calmly with the cows and let them know that it's safe to win and that they're getting fed. When heifers come in, I would put them into a calving house at the other side of this white door here. Yeah. And um, maybe a week or ten days before calving, I'd put the collar on. Um, I put them on to fix feeding, maybe two kilos a day. Yeah. So at the start, I might have to push them in with my shoulder. They'd be afraid, very nervous. But after that, there maybe, as I say, once they know there's food in there, they're hungry for it. Yeah. They'll they'll rush in it. So when the calf down, uh, rarely I have to gather cows up. You know, them them heifers up. They're going themselves. I see the cows have been fed here by robot as well. John, do you want to tell us a wee bit about this system and how it works? Yeah, this is the, the, the vector system. Uh, it was installed uh, 10 years ago. Basically what that does, it goes along and measures, pushes the feed up and measures the, 
the height of the feet as it pushes up using a laser. That's that wee laser there, if you can see the wee red dot. And that's telling the distance it is from the wall or whereabouts it is. Let's say, you know what, as that's pushing it up, that's measuring the height of the feet where I have it set at 100 mil. Yeah. So every hour, this feeder will go out and push up the silage and it'll, it'll push up and measure the feet height. And if it falls below 100 mil, yes. it'll go and make a feed up. And this yeah. feeder holds yeah. in between five or 600 kilos at a time. And how does it know where it is now, the distance it is from the wall? Is it using that laser or is there a guidance no, on the... The, the pre measurement on these ultrasound sensors, and that keeps it a certain distance. Oh, it's no the wall. It knows where it is. Yeah. And you're one of the first in Ireland and UK to, correct, yeah. to go fully robotic like yeah, this. Yeah. And how did that come about, sir? Um, well, Lily approached me and just offered me the trial of it, and the, what they showed me was a, a video of it on, mm -hmm. on the computer, and I was kind of blown away about it. Even now, this technology is, is amazing. Yeah. Um, and I just didn't know what to think of it. I just. So you probably were skeptical because I'd be the same. Yeah, very skeptical. I just. I didn't think too much of it, but yeah. they gave me the offer. They told me to think about it and I thought about it and he says, like, I've nothing to lose. Yeah. So I went ahead and I said I'll do the trial and really never looked back since. It's, it's having that courage to move into that whole system of robotics kind of makes everybody nervous. It's what would make me nervous, of course. But seeing it here working and all, it's definitely, it's definitely pretty cool. So John takes us to a new area here, which he calls the kitchen. Now, I thought he was taking us in for a cup of tea because I hadn't a clue. What he meant by kitchen. So how does this work, John? Or what way is this set up? This is up? the feed kitchen where all the food is prepared for the cows. Um, the floor is really a, a grid on the computer and it's numbered from one to 56. So you've got, you can put 56 different blocks of uh, feed types in there. Well, so the floor, you say just there, and you say the floor is numbered. How do you mean? We've got a mark here where we can set a block. Yeah. So the feed dropper will know this is number block number eight. So I can set maybe a whole crop here. So on the computer, that'll be block number eight and it's whole crop. So it knows where the, all the whole crop is situated. It knows on based on what you've put, whether it's silage, yeah. whole crop, it grabs what it needs and then brings it across here, I presume, and yeah. your feeder is in the ups, it ups the side of that wall and it dumps it into the feeder. We get a first, second or third cut, um, just dedicate the certain animal vent feeder best quality to, to the milk cows and maybe just the lesser. That's the quality of the silage to be store cattle or, or dry cows. It seems to be you have to be tuned in, keep on top of everything and, and, and just to make sure everything's in its right place. Just knowing where to place each block, but I presume you just as you go along you get really used to it. Yeah, well, I would operate it all myself. Um, I suppose if uh, I would have to send somebody up maybe to do it if I had to go away. If you were going away, that's, yeah, yeah well, would, would it take long, do you reckon, if you're a new guy come in? To show them how not, to keep not really. Going. I suppose the young ones now are, are probably you know, tech savvy ah, these yeah, days. Yeah, yeah, and yeah, can yeah. learn a lot quicker. They definitely are. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, it's it's a great system. It's it's all you have to be in your computer and, and kind of be ahead of the game. You know, if you have a problem with feeding, if cows drop milk, you can look in your computer and see what was fed that day. Yeah. Or what wasn't fed. Yes. Yes. You find know, the source. These are the houses that uh, we put the wean calves into. Um, they're up quite a number of years. Um, but my dad's replaced all the old doors. He's made all these doors himself. So this is Pat, this is John's father, and he's working away here as we're talking. He's still working away and fitting bits and pieces. You're putting a, a catch for your doors. Um, John tells me you've done a lot of these fabrication yourself or at all. Yeah, I've done all these doors. Engineering in the blood? No. It's just Kim, <laughs> farmer there. Yeah, yeah, I've done the work from it. Yeah, very just good. Love for it. Just a love for it. Is that you enjoy this type of work? Yeah, yeah. What do you think of the whole robotic system yourself? Oh, great job. My father would look at it as his generation would never have seen that type of thing before. And even a milking powder, modern mm. milking powder, would be a big upscale to the way he did things. But you probably, did you milk when you were younger? Or? Yeah, I milked with a hand on a three legged stool. That's <laughs> a good man. <laughs> Many times I got kicked off it. Yeah, oh yeah, I heard plenty of stories about that. And yeah. did you go pipeline then? Yeah, pipeline pi and then, and then parlor. parlor. Yeah. Yeah. Same as ourselves, yeah. <laughs> Did you, would you find much of a difference now? I know this, the milking by hand, but back in the days when you are on the pipeline, the way everything is now, with cows now, would you find a big change? Um, massive change, yeah. What the pipeline we had in the bar was, there was three, three stalls in the, in the bar. And like you're, we had probably about 30 cows at the time with the pipeline and we're lifting them in and out, you know. And, Tying them up into stalls. Uh, yeah. It worked. Mm, this person, it worked and it's yeah, what yeah. a lot of people would have done. Yeah. How do you see things in another 20 years? Do you think it's going to evolve more? Uh, 
I don't know where it can go to, sir. You'd never imagine this, and goodness, what it'll be in 20 years. They'll have a machine, you'll maybe put a load of grass in and come out and milk. Yeah, come out and milk. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> That's one way of putting it, all right, yeah. It's great to have your father here doing these jobs, because I know what even myself. My father isn't the fittest now, but he still looks cattle for me and everything, and it's great to have someone on the farm to help you. Yeah, and especially yeah. doing jobs like this, which is you know, another it's, set of eyes. It's, it's another set of eyes. Yeah, absolutely. Who who gives the most advice here <laughs> on the farm now, or who'd be who'd be the, still the main man? It's the baby brother. <laughs> who listens to the advice? <laughs> That's right. So just in the calf shed here now with John and his father here behind us, and and first thing I'm noticing is you're feeding an automatic feeder. Uh, seeing the collars and the calves, I've never actually seen that before. So, what way does this work then, John? You know, these uh, collars, there's a, there's a wee button reader on here that goes into the, into the calf feeder. So these calves are being fed between 6 and 8 litres per day. Yeah. And they can drink little and often. Yeah. You know, they can go in for a litre and a half or come back later for a litre. Or, you know, they've got that li all their litres to drink any part of the day. They're in here for 58 days. Uh, come here about maybe between 7 and 8 days after, after being born. And then for now, 58 days, they're on that that feeder there. You have great airflow. When I walk into a house, um, you know, the smell is what you, you, you base a lot on, is the air moving, and there's none, no smell in here whatsoever. There's yeah, no stale air. Yeah, the way we designed this house, uh, we've got our inlets on the side, but we we'll close them up. We have a big open ridge that's protected with an all roof. So that lets, okay. lets a lot of that stagnant air out. So you have less health problems when you have less of that stale air about. As long as them, cows are, well, them calves are well bedded and kept dry. Yeah. You and know. they are, they're very dry there. You have a nice yeah. slope on your floor too. Yeah. Both, both ways. Both ways, your yeah. slopes are on both. Yeah. So if, like, if I went up there, the water runs out the other way. Rather than come down here and wet it all, you know. Oh yeah, so it doesn't have to run through the whole bed. That's right. Yeah. What's, um, oh, this contraption here, was it, uh, just looking at it, it caught me eye. Yes, yeah, so these two doors are, these can be automatically dropped down to uh, this wall height to create a microclimate. And this is when the temperature gets below zero. Okay. We would lower these just for, for the night and then raise them in the morning again. Just creates a microclimate for the calves. You know, they just, yeah, it there. holds the heat. It holds yeah. the heat down, yeah. We can drop it to that height. Yeah. But if it's a small number of calves, like this pen here, we can, we can drop it away down. Would huddle in there and create a, yeah, know, it's a lovely, a lovely cozy spot. Um, you were telling me your father had a lot to do with the building of this. Um, yeah, but that was the engineer, the main designer of it. Um, yeah, he came up with the idea with the electric winch up there. Your father's here beside us. I suppose he's the best man to tell us about it. Where did you find this idea, or where did you where did you come across this? It just comes to me. Yeah, I never saw it before and. I didn't know what way it would work out with the height and the length. I couldn't put it any higher because I couldn't, couldn't raise it up to the roof then. Yeah. So that's the only height I could have, that's the, the highest I could, I could have made it. And you had to probably go up and you had a well that like, gather on, you done all that work yourself? Yeah. yeah. Good man. It's a great mind to be able to come up with something like this because it struck me as soon as I came in and... That's serious. Yeah. Now we're down here, John, in our other shed. This is your... Yeah, so this your bull and heifers. This is our bull and heifers. Uh, one part of it. Bull and heifers. We need heifers this side and then the bull and heifers up this here side. Just admiring his father's walking away here in the background. <laughs> he keeps going the whole time. It's great to see. Yeah. So then in the next house there's oh, your Belgian our, blues. our stronger store kettle are. Yeah. That's an unusual slat. Yeah, this, that's a slat from the 80s. Uh, the 1980s. Um, it's called a perforated slat. So at the moment we've, we've got rubber mats at the back there. We're just trying that, trying that out to see how well it works with, it, yeah. with the cattle. It's unusual, just, I've never seen a slat like that before. There wouldn't be that many of them about. It's just the, in the 1980s, that was kind of maybe the, the trend at the time. You have the holly. You yeah. must have got told about the holly like myself. <laughs> <laughs> Do you find it good? Do you find it works? Um, yeah, I think it, somebody says it's the, the male holly that works. The male holly, I was told, yeah. yeah. So in this house, there's not so much about it all. No. Um, so yeah, maybe it does have a play, part to play on everybody's farm. It's working for him, so if it works for him, it would work for me. Yeah, so this is the the new drag house we built uh, a couple of years ago. And we also put in the bubbler system into the tank. Okay, can you show us that? What yeah. type of way does that work? 
Well, this is the aeration system where the pipes are put onto the ground on the floor of the story tank. And from the hours of two o'clock in the morning to six o'clock in the morning, the, the air is passed through all these pipes and yeah. the story is all aerated. Clean mixing, um, we use it on the cheaper electricity rate, if you can call it cheap now. Yeah. Um, so the, the story never has to be a agitated. Mixed, uh, agitated at all. So you never have to run an agitator in here? We never have to run the tractor and agitator in here at all. It's got a lazy arm on the, or an automatic arm if you want to call it, on the tanker as well. So Sit down as that. You drive up here and, and automatically fill. Very handy. I've seen it on the towers before. I've mm -hmm. uh, seen that bubbling system work and I've never seen it in an actual slatted tank before but it's good to know that it can be fitted. It'll yeah. probably get more popular now as the years yeah, goes it's, on. Yeah, it's a lot safer now so it is where cows are we can't move them anywhere else. Yeah. You, well, you have to mix. Um, the consistency of the slurry is pretty good now when, when we do go to put it out. PD plus havers. So they're all PD positive. So they're all a, a diagnosed pregnant in calf. Are you calved down around about two years of age or? Yeah, I would say to get in around that, I, I don't mind going two months over um, because I can get heifer scalping maybe a month or two, even before 24 months, and that kind of evens it up. But I don't mind it in calving down 26 months, They've, that wee bit extra strength as well. LED lighting, all through your sheds? Yeah, we, we use them because it's, we like the good bright light yeah. at, at night time, especially in the winter months. A very clear light, it's probably yeah. a white light, is it? A real yeah, white it's, light? It's, it's just like cool white, as they call it. Yeah. And also, you've got the, the floods, 10 watt flood lights. They're yeah. easy electric, but they give out a good, good light as well in, in this. Well, that's, area. that's kind of the thing um, LEDs, it's going to be easier on, on energy, and that's what a lot of people are aiming towards. Absolutely. And they, they're all set on timers. So on timers. We, we've okay. got 16 hours of daylight even in the, in the winter time for the milking cows. Just looking at your water trots, I've never seen that particular one before, the big dump uh, drain at the bottom of them. That's my, my dad's engineer again. Um, they were originally Valley Gutter and he extended the sides a wee bit. Um, it's left in a heavy duty water truck. It'll never break and it's easy to clean out. Did your father ever ever veer away from farming with all this engineering skills that he has? No, I'd say maybe engineering's his first love though. <laughs> it seems to be because a lot of the stuff I've noticed around the farm has been designed by your father. And that's just, that's brilliant. It's a great water trot. He's just showing me his foot bath here that he has in. And let me presume your father made this one too, did he? Yeah, it's a semi-automatic foot bath. Um, to empty the foot bath out, we've got the electric winch again, same as the calve doors. So when we want to empty it out, we press the button to lift it up. And that'll empty all the solution out. So that solution has been made up this morning, so we're not gonna, we're not gonna empty it out now. So that'll dump it out, no hands on, it'll just dump it out, then you come along and fill it again yourself. Yeah, and just, the hose give, just it a, beside give it a rinse out, and those gates will bar, will come across and bar in. So oh, all these yeah, cows, yeah. in this house, the, the heifers, dry cows, three calvers will be all fit bath twice a week. It looks so easy when you see it, but if you had to think about it yourself on the blueprint, it's not that easy to come up with them ideas. And again, it's, it's, it's something very well designed and simple, but works. And obviously comfort's a big thing as well with cows being in, so what kind of mats is underneath your cows? Um, well, well, this here one in the dry cows, we have the, uh, the the mattress, the pasture mattress. It's got the, what I call the sausage bags, and the rubber crumb inside the sausage bags, along with 20 mil of foam. So, uh, yeah, welfare and, and comfort is, is high on the list on, on the farm. Um, if you're good to your cow, your cow will be good to you. So you have a new area here, this is your pre-calving area here. Yeah, this pre-calving area, the cows come out of the dry cow group uh, three weeks prior to calving. This is a calving head here, which is it's another, it's a mattress, calving mattress that we have. When the cow is due to calve or at the point of calving, she comes in here. Great cushion. Yep. Powerful cushion. Easy what for type? the cow to grip and catch up. It's more or less the same as the, the cubicle mat. As a cubicle mat. Um, I think there's, there's an extra bit of foam, 30 mil of foam. There's a hell of a sponge in that mat. Not slippy? Not slippy at all. No. Um, as soon as the cows calve, we move the calves in here as soon as the calves lick them. Oh yeah, right behind us. And we're yeah. there for about a week at the time. You have the same lame trick as I. Oh, yeah. <laughs> lame's, great. lame's great, great. Once it's left for a period of time, Absolutely. it works very well. Easy. Yeah. One thing I noticed with your farm is you have every section, like with the cows coming here, then it's simple to bring them straight in here for calf, and then the young calf is straight in here. Just makes everything yeah. much easier. Yeah, I suppose if you make things hard for yourself, 
it'll not be done so often. This is all an open shed, which I noticed when I come up the road. You can see there's open obvious for obvious reasons. It lets plenty of air into the shed, but then they have a curtain system here to close this all off. Do you use it very often, John? Will you? No, it's only, only up and close, closed once or twice a year. Yeah, the winter time. Yeah, once yeah. it's yeah. up in the winter time, yeah. maybe October or, or November. East, east yeah, an east wind. Ah, this is you're facing into the east here then, on this yeah, side, yeah? yeah. Yeah. So I notice here as well on John's farm, he has, he has two units on both sides for managing the cow's feet. I don't know if it's a course a number of years ago, and um, it was just more or less routine foot trim cows that were being dried off. You can do it when it suits. Yeah. Pick your own time and do yeah, it as you, get as you want. Yeah, if you get the sooner you get her, the sooner she gets better. So yeah. I, f I find that there, you know, maybe hit the pain by putting the block on or whatever. But yeah, it's been going a number of years now and it's a very happy with the system. So the cows are being dried off, put them in here and they trim their feet up um, and then dry them off at the same time. Yeah. I know it's not ideal to do it when doing feet when you're drying cows off, but it, it works for me. Is this your scraper here? So many people do talk about. We we're just yeah. chatting here off camera. We we're, we we're just talking about um, the guy I watched the first time I seen it was in the 10th generation farmers channel. And this one doesn't have the sprinkler system. No, it, it doesn't. Um, sadly, not. But it, it could fill them with the sprinkler in this house because it's high dry matter, you know, forage going in. It, it works a lot better in, in, the, in the winter months when there's more moisture about. That's one of your father's John famous drinkers. <laughs> it's so well done. I know saying your brush is running, are they picking up just a sense of a cow walking by or do they run no, like that all the time? No, there's one of them cows in there. Oh, she's just after walking out, That's is that. she? Yeah. So, Tilt switch in here, so as soon as you lift this here. Oh yes, and away it goes. Have you changed, actually changed these brushes? We've never changed anything. In we, 10 years? We grease. There's grease points on, but we give a grease point now and again. Yeah, yeah. Uh, but that's all the maintenance that you need to give these. That's fairly good now to get that leaf out of brushes. I thought the brushes would have worn out over a couple of years or so. No, absolutely. No bother at all that there. So one thing we didn't mention was, you can see the zero graze in the background. John, you zero graze all your land and bring it into the cows? Yeah, well, this year, just the, the way grasses went, we stopped and tried to get more energy in the fields I put it into the clamp. Um, this is our second zero grazer that we've bought. We've been zero grazing maybe 15 years now. You find a better production of grass, better better use of grass with, with zero grazing? You're making more use of your land. Yeah. Um, as we're all indoors, we, we take a lot of grass in now. Um, we can go out in February and cut grass and we go out in November. It just depends what size we have in the pit. Is Ryan, you're doing uh, your work experience, your green cert? Yeah, the green mount, uh, level three. Agriculture so on. And you're a suckler farmer at home, you're thinking about going for robots maybe yourself? Yeah, suck cows and Angus schemes we were and bought milk cabbage this year and going to start building. Going for the milk. Going so something like that, yeah. And would you find your experience here, you obviously have to say it now when you've been watched, would you find your experience here good? It kind of helps you with that transition. Oh, oh aye, yeah, it's for very good. Like, yeah. yeah. Stuff you learned here. Yeah. Last life times up though. Pat was just showing me here something he made. When did you make this, Pat? Finished it this year. You made this entirely from scratch? Yeah. And you were saying you've still a wee few bits of pieces you, you want to do to it? Yep, yeah, yep. Yeah. What are you going to add on to it? Eh, uh, well, uh, I put that uh, hydraulic motor on it for, for turning it from side to side. Oh yeah, so this whole platform, when that's on, when that's on the loader, this whole platform yeah, can, yeah, can rotate. Long that way or long that way or straight across. Brilliant, brilliant. Yeah, and you have plenty of room to walk as well, like, yeah. and it's very safe. Well, I copied that now, I didn't put the... the you copied it, but you still had a... Exotic <laughs> water was new now. You still had to build it. So that's it, we're back home actually now. Nicole's just gone into the house there because it was quite a long day. These things can take quite a bit of time, but I have to say I thoroughly enjoyed the day. It was brilliant, it was a real eye opener. I had never actually in person seen robots work and I seen them one time at the plowing match back a long time ago but I never seen them since that not an actual on a farm if you know what I mean so it was a real eye-opener for me you have to thank John and his father for letting us come on the farm because they're absolutely gentlemen and the three us with great respect and brought us around and showed us all the ins and outs of the farm which isn't easy putting your farm in front of um lots of people's eyes that maybe watch these videos so there was one thing that struck me today 
and it was above all the robots and above all the technology that they had on the farm and that was his father father's a great man i <laughs> never seen a man with a pair of hands like it i love people that can use their mind to come up with their own inventions and no doubt he's a real good help to John they are a real good inspiration to drive him forward and I'd say that's where that all comes from his father so but the robots yes seeing them up in person definitely an experience I like the system I run at the moment nobody ever knows what the future holds in the future collars is something I definitely would look into I think they're they're just a vital bit of equipment and everybody that has them will tell you the same the robots themselves I wouldn't change what I'm doing at the moment. I like cows to be outside. If they came down the line to where there was robots, there is. I know there's people doing it um, where it could be set up that the cows still be outside and still come in to get made by the robots. That's probably the line I would go down, but that's way down the future. Nicole looked at them today and she said, that's the way I want to do it in the future. So that's the next generation. Whoever knows what's in store. Hope I covered as much as I could of it today and covered it as well as I could because I'm not a presenter. I don't have a production crew, I just have man with a GoPro and it's the first time I've ever kind of done this sort of thing so hopefully you enjoyed it because I've done the best I could and that's really all I can do. John's brother-in-law Martin was there um, at the beginning of the video when I pulled up and he asked me just quickly to give a wee shout out to a Pat Keown uh, from Balik in County Fermanagh so hello to you Pat, he tells me you're a big fan of the show so thanks very much for tuning in. So hope you enjoyed today's video, um, there'll be a lot more like that coming, part of this whole kind of series that we're putting together is with farms that are doing things a little different. This one was dairy, the next will be completely different. So if you want to know more about what's happened on John's farm, I want to find out more that wasn't in today's video, all you have to do is go over there and follow him on the robotic farm. He's on Instagram and I'm sure he'd be glad to help you out. So I'm gonna go off now and make me own cows because it's that time in the evening again. My visible watch is just telling me here now. Thanks very much for watching today's video. Look at me if you like the content, don't forget, give us a like. It helps to push the channel along. It doesn't cost you anything. You can hit that sub button, even an old bell there on the right hand side, tell you when our videos is up. Until the next one, we'll talk to you again.